Digestion is something most people just don't think about. We put time and effort into preparing and eating food, but we rarely consider what happens after we swallow it. As long as we're eating healthy food, our bodies will take care of the rest, right? In reality, it's a bit more complicated than that. Digestion is a delicate process that impacts our health more than we realize. I see clients for a variety of health concerns, but no matter what they're struggling with, I encourage each one to optimize their digestion. Why? Poor digestion can exacerbate or even cause a wide variety of diseases, including diabetes, heart disease, cancer, fibromyalgia, and a variety of autoimmune diseases. Digestion also influences energy and mood. The good news is there are simple steps you can take to optimize your digestion. Whether you have digestive problems or you've never even thought about it, these eight simple strategies will improve your digestive health. First, chew your food. Often we eat in a rush and forget to chew our food thoroughly. But there's a reason why we have teeth in our mouths instead of our stomach. Digestion starts in the mouth. Your saliva contains digestive enzymes that start breaking down the food you're eating before you even swallow. Chewing your food thoroughly will make digestion easier on the stomach and will also help you slow down, enjoy your food, and not overeat. Try to get as much enjoyment as you can out of each bite. Second, don't drown your meals. It's important to stay well hydrated, but my personal belief is that it's better to drink most of your water in between meals. Many people are used to washing down their food with lots of water and other beverages. Drinking too much fluid with your meals may dilute your stomach acid and delay digestion. The stomach does need some fluid for digestion, but it can actually extract the fluid it needs from the blood plasma. So if you stay well hydrated between meals, you won't need to drink much with your meals. If you do drink with your meals, ideally it should be a small amount of fluid. But this takes some planning. If you come to a meal already thirsty or dehydrated, go ahead and drink. The key is to plan ahead. Third, eat a big breakfast, a medium lunch, and a small dinner. I hope you're a breakfast eater. Breakfast will jumpstart your metabolism, energize your day, and make you more alert. It will also help prevent you from overeating for the rest of the day. Breakfast should be your biggest meal. After breakfast, the majority of the rest of the day's calories should come from lunch. Your metabolism is far more active during the daytime than during the evening and night. Your eating should match your body's needs. Eating a large meal soon before you go to sleep can sabotage your weight and interfere with digestion and sleep. Food eaten before bedtime is more likely to be stored as fat than food eaten earlier in the day. If you do eat dinner, try to make it three or four hours before going to sleep. Your digestive system needs to rest just like the rest of your body. Remember, eat like a king for breakfast, a prince for lunch, and a poor pauper for dinner. Fourth, avoid snacking. You may have heard that it's healthy to eat five or six small meals each day, or to eat a mix of regular meals and snacks. Personally, I believe it's best to avoid eating between meals. The stomach is kind of like a washing machine. Imagine starting a load of laundry. 30 minutes later, you realize you forgot to throw in your muddy jeans. Good thing the cycle isn't over, you think, and throw the jeans right in. 10 minutes later, will your laundry be clean? No, the entire load will be dirty. This is similar to what happens in the stomach. As you fill your stomach with food, it mixes with acid and digestive enzymes. The stomach churns it around. If you dump more food in when digestion is almost finished, it messes up the cycle. This can delay stomach emptying and slow down digestion. It takes the stomach about four or five hours to completely digest a meal and to produce enough hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes for the next meal. 
For this reason, it's a good idea to space your meals at least four to five hours apart. But what about blood sugars? Many diabetics suffer from low blood sugars as well as high blood sugar spikes. Snacks can provide a quick fix to bring the blood sugars back up, but they don't actually address the cause of hypoglycemia. The reason why blood sugar gets so low between meals is usually because they spike up after meals. When they spike, extra insulin is released that can overcompensate and drive the blood sugars down too low. Eating a snack brings the sugar level back up, but it's only a quick fix. If your blood sugar drops dangerously low, you obviously do need to eat a healthy snack to get it back to a safe level. A balanced snack like half an apple or half a banana with some peanut butter or nuts is a good option. But the best way to avoid the need to snack is to focus on eating balanced, first-class foods at your meals. These foods should stabilize your blood sugars and carry you over to the next meal. Many of my patients find that eating first-class foods naturally takes away their desire to snack. This improves both digestion and blood sugar stabilization. If you put these strategies into practice, you should eventually be able to wait at least four or five hours between your meals. Fifth, avoid irritating foods. Certain foods interfere with digestion, especially for people with food sensitivities. I've noticed that dairy is often harmful. Dairy acts like an antacid, which can decrease the natural acidity of the stomach and impair the ability to absorb nutrients. Many of my clients feel much better after eliminating dairy from their diets. Other people have difficulties with other foods. Pay attention to how various foods make you feel and then adjust your diet accordingly. Sixth, go for a walk. You already know that walking after you eat helps manage your blood sugars, but did you know that it also improves digestion? Walking after you eat helps to settle your stomach and can prevent bloating and gassiness. It also boosts your energy, prevents you from developing a food coma, and of course minimizes blood sugar and insulin spikes. Seventh, consider supplements. Several nutritional supplements are available for people who have digestive problems such as bloating, gas, delayed stomach emptying, and malabsorption. Elderly people and those with poor digestion often don't produce enough digestive enzymes. This group may benefit from taking live digestive enzyme supplements which are available in vegetarian form. Probiotics enhance digestion by colonizing the gut with healthy bacteria. Activated charcoal is great for digestive detox. When taken orally, it can relieve bloating, gas, diarrhea, and even stomach flu. Activated charcoal adsorbs many different toxins. It can also be taken a few times a week just to help cleanse the gastrointestinal system. Activated charcoal is available in both tablet and powder form, but the powder is much more effective. To take it, mix a teaspoon of activated charcoal powder with a glass of cold water. Charcoal doesn't taste too good, but it has tremendous health benefits. Make sure you wait at least a few hours after taking medications to take charcoal, or it may also adsorb your medications. And finally, eat with a grateful heart. It's written about the early apostles that they ate their food with gladness and sincerity of heart. I try to eat that way too, because I believe that an attitude of peace and contentment may be the most important strategy for healthy digestion.